What's up, everybody? It's your boy Souls here, and it's late at night. It's about 1 a.m., but I figured I would make a quick YouTube video for you guys. Um, if there is a notable, noticeable difference in the video or audio quality, it's because I just got a new iPhone. Uh, hopefully, I'll be able to make higher quality videos now because I have more storage, um, but that's for another day. Right now, I just want to quickly talk about the Atlanta Falcons. Um, I just, I was just thinking about it on a whim. I was like, you know what? Let's just make a video. So it's going to be a bit quiet. I apologize, but it is late at night. I could record this tomorrow, but it's on my mind right now. And I want to talk about, you know, what the Falcons should do this season, this off season, I should say, because there's a lot of uh, talk about perhaps they should move on from Matt Ryan or Julio Jones, whether they should draft somebody really high or if they should, you know, trade down, maybe they should draft a QB. I'm just going to answer, you know, basically what I think the Falcons should do this off season. And the first thing it comes down to is a, is a good general manager. That's the big thing. And, you know, one thing that I've read from a lot of sources, something that's very off-putting with the Falcons, is that um, whoever the general manager is reports to Rich McKay, who is the CEO, I believe, of the Falcons. He's been around for, I think, over a decade. I think, like, 2006 is when Arthur Blank hired him. And the problem is that Rich McKay, he's been around this the failure of this organization. And for a GM to report to him, who then reports to Arthur Blank, is very off-putting. A GM wants to have full control. And so that's a little off-putting. But I think to counter that, it's worth knowing that Thomas Dimitrov pushed the cap limit almost every single season. If not, he went over it. So you, he cert, a GM coming in will certainly have the freedom to spend as they wish and make the acquisitions that they wish. Um, and I think another thing is then who you hire as a head coach, that will determine who you draft, who you pick up. Excuse me, your coaching philosophies. It determines everything. Um, so the first thing to do is probably hire a GM. Who would I hire? There's options. Um, it appears that the Falcons are targeting many African-American GMs, whether or not that's just a Rooney rule, BS workaround they're trying to get right now. I don't know if they're just trying to do that for the extra pick. If so, that's a little bit cheap, I have to say. Um, but there's very talented general managers that they're interviewing. I think Rick Smith is a good candidate because he has sh drafted great players for the Houston Texans. Um, you know, you think of J.J. Watt, DeAndre Hopkins, Deshaun Watson. They've drafted some great players. Now, they haven't had so much success to back that up. But, you know, you had Bill O'Brien as your head coach. Uh, the owners aren't fantastic by any means. Um, but I do think he's a great candidate. Uh, I also like uh, the Saints front office guy. I don't remember his name exactly. I think it's Terry something. Maybe it starts with an R. Um Rosenot? Is it is it Rosenot or something like that? Or Fontenot. Terry Fontenot. That's his name. Um, and he's been a part of a very successful organization with the Saints. They've drafted well. They've done well in free agency. Look at Demario Davis. That was a big pickup. So I think those are two big names that stick out. Of course, there's plenty of others. Everyone recommends Lewis Riddick. I'm not a huge fan of Lewis Riddick, but I wouldn't be opposed to it. I don't know too much about the GMs. So I can't say for sure. So I'm kind of a little iffy on whoever they sign. I have to wait and see. And that will determine the head coach. I can tell you one thing for sure. Do not hire Raheem Morris. They're giving him an interview. Once again, maybe some Rooney rule, whatever. Uh, just to, you know, look good in the public light or whatever. I don't know. But Raheem Morris is not a great head coach. And he's proved that week in and week out as the head coach. We've continued to blow leads under Raheem Morris's leadership, the defense has looked a little bit better, but it's not noticeable enough to give him consideration, and the offense has been garbage. He hasn't cut Dirk Cutter from his job. I mean, that's all signs he shouldn't be in the position for this. So who did the Falcons hire as their head coach? Everybody likes Eric Bieniemy. I'm not sold on him. I think Andy Reid, you know, he's the guy that's giving uh, Bieniemy his success, and I'm not saying... The enemy is going to be a bad head coach, but this gives me very big vibes of Dan Quinn. And what do I mean by that? Dan Quinn leached off of the success of Pete Carroll's defense. That was Pete Carroll's defense. Dan Quinn just happened to be the defensive coordinator and got success uh, with the Seahawks Legion of Boom. 
He came to Atlanta. He was able to draft defensive players. He had the freedom to do it. He played these really small, fast guys. The defense sucked. The defense was one of the worst every year. So I wasn't... So I'm not too big on these coordinators that are similar in terms of skill set to the head coach. I would prefer... Not I don't like Robert Sala. I don't want Robert Sala to be the head coach. He's the defensive coordinator of the 49ers. But I do like how he's the defensive coordinator for an offensive-minded head coach like Kyle Shanahan. That's kind of what I'm looking for. So I'm not quite sold on Eric Bieniemy. Um, people also recommend Brian Dabble, the offensive coordinator of the Bills. Let's see how they do uh, going towards the playoffs. If they can make a deep run, um, perhaps as something really good. Another thing to remember is this head coach, you probably imagine that they're going to be ready to develop the next quarterback after Matt Ryan. And, I mean, he's done a good job with Josh Allen. Josh Allen was very raw coming out of college. He's turned into a great passer. He could end up winning the MVP this season. MVP this season. So, you know, perhaps he's someone we could really consider because I do think we need to completely switch up the offense. We need a running game is what we need very badly. We haven't really had a running game since Michael Turner. We had the Super Bowl year, but that was it. Um, but yeah, the head coaches, there's there's still a lot on the table. Um, there's some guys from college too. There's some college coaches. People throw around Lincoln Riley. I'm not a big fan of Lincoln Riley. Jim Harbaugh, no way. Um, Hugh Freeze, no thanks. Um, but let's wait and see. Let's let's wait a little while. And when more videos start to come out, more news starts to come out about candidates, I'll make another video about that. And I guess the next big question is, what do we do with Matt Ryan or Julio Jones? And, you know, I'm the biggest Julio fan there is. I love Julio Jones to death. Um, but I start to think more and more we should move on from him for the better of this team. And it's going to be a big problem when Calvin Ridley needs his next contract, his big contract, because he's going to command big money because he's one of the best receivers in the league, statistically and, you know, skill set on the field. And I think it would be a poor decision to keep Julio and move on from Ridley. I think it would even it would be even worse to pay them both big money at the same time because then you have no cap to spend elsewhere. And there's no team that pays two receivers top tier money there is none because no one's stupid enough um i think ridley has one or two more years before he gets paid i think he has two seasons until he gets paid his big deal we have to get rid of julio before that and i say get rid i shouldn't say get rid we have to trade him to a, a contender i want julio to win a super bowl more than i want the falcons to win a super bowl to be honest with you trade him to a team maybe not this off season, but the next off season for sure where he can go and win something maybe we get a I mean, at that point, probably like a second round pick, maybe a second and a fourth, maybe not even, because he'll probably be, what, 33, 32, 33, 34, maybe even. I think it'd be like 33 in two years. Let's see what we can get. But for this season, let's keep him. We need him to help build if we do somehow, for some reason, if the team decides to get a young quarterback or even with a head coach, give, you know, if we're bringing in a head coach, we want to have a, a good, stable team with good leaders. And Julio Jones is a great leader. Who's also a great leader is Matt Ryan. Matt Ryan's an interesting one because he's kind of experienced a drop off this year. And not all of it is his fault. The offensive line's been bad. Their cutters, this is the worst year play calling wise that we've had since Dirk Cutter in his first tenure back in the matt ryan's early years but i mean he is starting to drop off quite a bit he's getting old his throw power isn't quite there his accuracy is deteriorating and that's the big thing for matt ryan if his accuracy isn't there you're not always gonna have julio jones to bail you out so um people say move on from him i wouldn't number one you can't the dead cap is too much so you're gonna have to keep him around for a couple of years at least probably even three or four more years until the contract is just about up before you can release him or trade him. You can't get rid of him now, so there's no way anything's going to happen with that. Uh, you know, I think I think the big issue with it is we don't have a running game. If we had, you know, we brought Todd Gurley in. We knew he wasn't going to be crazy, um, but we did expect more out of him. He isn't that anymore. He's probably going to be out of the league. He'll be a backup next year, probably be out of the league in two years. Uh, I think we need to spend an early pick, probably a second or a third, on a really good running back uh, that 
can really do it all. That's what we need. We need a star running back so we can take the pressure off of Matt Ryan, who throws the ball like every play. He never gets any time. If we get a great running back in the draft, then I really think it can change the way this offense operates because we haven't had a run game. In, in essence, we haven't been able to keep leads because we can't run the ball. We can't chew clock. If we had a great run game, I think we would have been a playoff team this year. But I think that contributes. Um, so... Dirk Cutter's notoriously bad for calling runs. He's always had one of the worst rush offenses with Tampa Bay. Wasn't great with Atlanta either, even with Michael Turner. So there's that. Um, maybe we draft a quarterback. I'm not opposed to drafting quarterback in the mid rounds. Maybe even a second round pick on a quarterback wouldn't be terrible. Because if Matt Ryan does have a Phillip Rivers like drop off, or even this year with Big Ben where he's just not doing well at all. We can throw in a rookie and see what he can do, like a Jalen Hurts type situation with Philly. But I, I mean, first round pick right now we're projected number four. I think we'll probably get number four, maybe number three even. I think we'll probably get number four because I don't see us beating the Bucks. We'll address this later on, but for right now, I think we're probably it would probably be best to trade down. Gregory Russo, we need an edge rusher. Gregory Russo is the best, but he's not a top five caliber player. You could probably get him at six or seven. And even if you don't get him, it's not the biggest miss in the world. Um, and a try acquiring draft capital is very important. Now, if Panay Sewell's on the board, I'd take Panay Sewell. Jake Matthews is overrated. He's overpaid. I think he needs to get cut just to save some money. And we can draft Panay Sewell. That's left tackle of the future. If we miss him, no big deal. I like Patrick Sertan, but I don't think a top five pick on him would be necessary. I think this is just a very bad draft class for Atlanta. Because whereas the past, whereas last year you would have had, you know, hindsight 50-50. We didn't know Jeff Okuda would play the way he has this season, but we would have had Jeff Okuda or C.J. Henderson or Derek Brown or even Isaiah Simmons available at this high of a pick. Then it would be looking really good for us. But this year there's not cr any crazy good defensive players. It's very balanced, and it's actually kind of bad from it's it's not very top heavy it's very balanced uh in terms of the overall class so we'll see what happens we'll see what happens just some quick thoughts and uh yeah let me know if you if there are any falcons fans or just nfl fans in general that are interested in what the falcons are doing uh let me know in the comments what you think about the situation what you would do if you were arthur blank or the head coach or the gm or whatever what do you think the falcons should do this off season um also, let me know if the quality is better, audio, video, whatever. I Like I said, it's like 1 o'clock in the morning, so I'm not talking too crazy right now. But hopefully I'll make some more videos soon. Uh, let me know also if there's anything you want me to talk about, any reviews of anything or whatever. I do plan on making a review on the new iPhone I just bought. It's the iPhone 12. Um, that's my, my whole budget gone. <laughs> hopefully you guys start... Get me subscribers and views so I can afford to pay this off. But uh, once again, thank you very much for watching. I hope you are subscribed, like the video, like I said. And uh, take care, guys. Have a good night. Peace out.